I'm Old Big Glenn. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, a quick update on that one. A couple of blogs that I did on renting and saving the difference and the, you know, how important buying your principal residence is in a country like Canada. Uh, the only tax break they give us with the principal resident exemption, take advantage of it. It's all they give us here in Canada. RSP is great, but it's all taxable when, when it comes time to draw that down. So, but I always get a lot of pushback whenever I talk about renting versus owning. And there's still a lot of people out there that are, that are in a state of denial. Uh, they're in denial, and I don't mean a river in Egypt. They just don't wanna face the music and, and the difference between renting versus owning over the last 25, 30, 40 years in Canada. Do the numbers on this stuff. Yes, interest rates go up and down and there's always times when interest rates spike up that, hey, maybe renting and saving the difference might make a little bit more sense. Like today, when interest rates have gone from 1.3 to 5.5. But as I said in my last blogs, most people simply do not invest or save the difference. Well, first off, forget about saving. I've done lots of Saturday blogs on the difference between saving and investing. Saving is putting your money into a bank account or a term deposit or a GIC. You <laughs> You're wasting your time on those things. If you want to put a little money of that into an emergency fund, a six month emergency fund, by all means, put it into those vehicles. But if you're saving long term for retirement, it's a loser's game. You're not, you're not going to keep pace, barely keep pace with inflation and they're not tax efficient. You need to invest your money in equities and real estate. Take advantage of the tax uh, um, benefits you get from those. Go back and watch my blogs. Go pick up my book, Along for the Ride on Amazon, where I give you a step-by-step -step process how I became a multimillionaire at a young age from doing nothing fancy. I'm no smarter than anybody else. I just set a plan, invested my money diligently every month, put it into real estate and high-quality equities and, and indexed invest, and became a, a multimillionaire when I was quite young, in my late 30s. You can do it too. But you know, I often talk, just put it to bed one more time, without even looking at the buy and invest and save the difference and rent and save the difference. The intangibles of home ownership alone should have you possessed to be buying a home and, be, and buying your principal residence. You know, the rental market right now, I don't know, some people I guess aren't renting or they're unaware of it, they're living in their parents' basement, I don't know. But one of the, if you have to wade into the rental market right now, it's not a fun place to be. It never is and it's very ugly right now. Rental rates have spiked up and they're not getting any better. They're going to continue to go up and up and up. Vacancy is at near zero. You know, you're living like a gypsy. I did a blog a couple weeks ago on the number of tenanted properties for sale right now. It's always up there, but it's probably doubled in the last six months. These are longtime uh, investors getting out because they've had enough of the NDP and their rent freezes and all the rights going to the tenant. I've made my money. I'll sell and move on to greener pastures. I'll put the money into Bell Canada and TELUS and Apple and just index invest that money here. I'm getting older. It's passive. Bye bye. And that just puts more pressure on the rental rates. But you know, the intangibles of home ownership is just pride of ownership. I mean, I know a lot of young people have been watching my blog for up to 10 or 12 years from the beginning. And they've told me stories about how, you know, the feeling you get when you buy, finally buy and get out of that renter treadmill. It's it's a relief. It's like a boulder off your off your shoulders financially because now you're not at the whim of your landlord waiting for that phone call that you've got to move, uh, waiting back into that rental market, the $2,800 a month you're paying that's down the drain. You know, you've got that pride of ownership now. You can buy the home, maybe renovate the kitchen in a couple of years, renovate the bathroom next year, put some new flooring, build a custom office or a custom music room or whatever you want that you can't do with a rental property because you don't own it. You're on borrowed time. And then, of course, the tax advantages of it. You're using the leverage there. Use it wisely. I've done so many blogs on leverage and so many people just don't understand how leverage works. Buy my book. I think I give you a really good example in my book called The Ghost Ship to Wealth on buying a condo, putting 20% down and what that can do for you over 15, 20, 25 years. You know, the intangibles are just worth it in, its, in itself. The pride of ownership, all the equity grows tax-free, using the leverage, creating wealth two ways. 
The first way is you're just paying down the debt every year, which is boosting your, 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 your gains on it or boosting your, your net worth. And then, of course, over long periods of time, you'll get appreciation on that home. Not every year. There'll be good years where you make 10% on it or 15%, and then there'll be bad years where it's down 5 or 6% or it's flat for a couple of years. But I can always guarantee to you guys, you buy a home today, buy a one-bedroom condo in New Westminster today and keep it for 20 years, you're going to look back on it as one of the best decisions you ever made, bar none. Always look at real estate with a long-term horizon. Ignore what markets do this year, next year, or the year after that. Focus on the long-term just like you do that I always stress with you guys for your retirement income. Boy, there's a lot of dumb stuff that goes on in the stock market. You know, people who just knee-jerk reactions, selling stock, they're always waiting on some economic forecast that has nothing to do with the companies they hold. It's a giant sham. These people, I love buying shares from these people when the Dow's down six or 700 points. I'll scoop in and buy some of your shares from you. And then in 10 or 15 years, it's gonna, I know it's going to be worth a whole lot more than what I paid for it. And I'm going to collect those quarterly dividends along the way, which keep increasing. So there's really no contest here buying versus renting. I have to say too, finally, nothing wrong with renting in the short term. If you move out here from Ontario and have never been to Vancouver, I would probably say rent for a year or so. Get used to the city, see how you like it here. Have a look at the different neighborhoods, explore the city for a year and just rent. Then if you're committed to Vancouver, I like it here, I like my job here, I'm gonna stay, then you should get into home ownership. So nothing wrong with renting short term, but renting long term is going to destroy you financially Anybody that tries to tell you that that's not the case and, oh, I rent and I invest or I save the difference and I come out way ahead is not looking at the tax consequences, the leverage, the intangibles, the pride of ownership, the not living like a gypsy. It's not even close. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I'm giving you guys the straight goods here from someone who's been in this business for 35 years. I've seen a lot. Final quick thing here, I see from my mortgage guy here that uh, we've already got a pretty hot market, as you guys know, nothing for sale, more buy a lot more buyers than there are sellers. I see that they are dropping some of the four and five year fixed mortgage rates now. Uh, one that I just came across my desk, I see a five year fixed here now at 4.5%. So they're already coming down a little bit on these fixed terms. It's pretty crazy when you consider that the variable, usually the variable is always the cheapest. But my, I've got a couple of variable rates right now. I think I'm paying five, 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 six percent. And here you've got a five year fixed at 4.5. That's telegraphing you here, guys, on where people see the interest rates coming in in 2024 and 2025 and 2026. Probably lower than what the variable rate is now. I'm on Big Line. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.